Hey everyone, Old School Pokemon here, back again with my usual co-host, Catch 'Em All Collectibles, Dan, on the Pokeflips podcast. In this video, we highlight a clip from our most recent podcast. We hope you enjoy. Do you think CGC has loosened up a little bit on their grades? That that's another kind of hot topic uh, going yes. around lately. Yeah, I definitely think they have. Um, I've just been seeing the returns. Um, I've seen more tens in the past month than I have in like the entirety of the rest of grading CGC. Yeah, um, which I think is good. I think it's a really, really good thing. Um, I've definitely heard more buzz around it too. Um, I think it's creating. I think some people are like, "Oh, like you know, why would they change this this far in?" Um, but I think a lot more people are just excited to get tens back. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, it's hard because I feel like everything I talk about is anecdotal, despite the fact that I'm grading like you know hundreds of thousands of cards. <laughs> um, but you know, I know that we're getting way more tens back. I personally just got an order back of. Um, I submitted like. I think four or five hundred um, fire red leaf green reverses, um, and got a pretty significant portion of them back as tens. Um, I think I got like forty or fifty tens, which is way more than we than I expected. Nice. Um, yeah, no, no perfects, unfortunately, um, but some some really cool stuff. Uh, something really cool about that that I actually found out is uh, there's error cards from that set. Um, I didn't know that it was an error, but apparently a bunch of the cards, uh, the reverse hollow was printed upside down um, because Ugh. the reverse hollow for that is like the 3D looking Pokeballs and the holographic when you um, kind of shine it in the light. Um, and they identify that as an error. And I, I didn't even know that that, that existed until I graded with them. Um, so that was very fascinating to see. But I got, I'm, I guarantee you they're pop ones. I got some... Error reverse hollow pristine 10 uh fire red leaf green cards and huh. I'm very very excited to add them to my collection. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I I told myself I I recently did a YouTube video going over uh a recent CGC return and it it was all just Watsy first edition commons and uncommons um and it was like 8.5 after 8.5. So I recorded that video and said yeah. I am done with CGC. But then all these people posted about CGC creating a little bit easier, mm -hmm. their bulk turnaround times being 50 or whatever days. Um, so I did I did just recently send another small batch of mainly mainly like the celebration classic collection cards uh, into into CGC. And I'm I'm really curious to see how those come back because I spent a good bit of time looking over them. Now that I kind of know the CGC grading scale a little bit, um, so hopefully I'll do a little bit better. Because I would, I as as a company, I absolutely love CGC, um, but their grading scale from what I've gotten back so far is just brutal. So yeah, I, I, I do really hope that's a thing. Too. <clears throat> yeah, it just feels awful. I it's something I've definitely heard from customers of just like kind of like the eight point five grind where you just get all these eight point fives back and. It's so borderline depending on what you submit. Like any modern 8.5 is basically worthless. Yeah. Like at that point, you're selling to get your money back. Yeah. Um, so I don't, you know, I don't know the internal process. I, I'm guessing that feedback was heard somewhere along the way. And um, they decided to kind of change up, you know, how they were going about it. And, you know, it's interesting because I think that it's a good change. Like I really do think that it, it was an important change to make and um i'm i'm interested to see how it's going to affect crossover and regrading um i think that there's a lot of people with old school cards that are going to be sending them back in to try to hit slightly higher grades but we'll see yep yeah it's really interesting too because like recently in the news there was the whole cg csg announcement kind of like a sister company to CGC, mm -hmm. both under the, the broader umbrella. Yeah. Uh, I forget what the... What's the broader umbrella? I think the parent company is CCG. Okay. Yeah, they, they do like coins and cards, sports, non-sports. They do a lot of different things. Paper yeah. money. Well, the parent company, I think, is just a holding company, and then they have like 10 different companies for yeah. all that different stuff. But it's interesting, the fact that like CSG 
publicly made an announcement formally they're like changing things up they're actually going as far as like change their label and all that cards really? can yeah yeah like, so th they're going from their current i think it's like a green label to more of like a, it's like a blacker like a black kind of cleaner looking just differently organizing the information but if you have one of their old ones like this is a cgc card not a csg but if you have one of their old ones you can send it in and for five bucks so like a reduced fee i think you have like a two or three month grace period to do that but you can send it in and you can re-encapsulate it new label new slightly changed grading scale too like i think they basically said we're going to grade things a little bit easier huh and they, they took really away cool. certain – they actually did away with subgrades altogether. They, they said something about – Really? Yep, yep. So few people were using them. 20% or less, I believe, were using them. And they just said, like, so few people are using them. They take us so much time. It's just not – like, we're going to – uniformity. We're going to go for no subgrades. So, Those creators are breathing a sigh of relief right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm really, really interested to see if CGC formally does anything along those lines or if they don't. Um, be really, really curious to see what happens there. I'll be honest. I don't see subgrades going away for CGC just because, you know, while I get a lot of bulk um, without subgrades, there is a significant number of cards that are submitted with subgrades. People really, really like them. Mm -hmm. um, I like them. I think that they're definitely worth it um, for anything above, like, economy. Um, but I can't see C CGC cards getting uh, getting rid of them. I just I'd be surprised it. though if more than twenty percent of cards overall get subgrades, and and that was the number that CSG basically said mm. only twenty percent are getting them, so we're not going to do them anymore. Like I don't know what CGC's number is, but I'd be shocked if it was higher than twenty percent. Yeah, um, I think, but I think before the price change, it definitely was higher than that. Oh yeah. Um, post price change, I'm not sure though, but I, I think that that might affect things differently as well. Um, because I'm assuming that CSG is talking from the entirety of submission that it's less than 20%. So I'm not sure what it looks like with um, CGC trading cards right now. Yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll, it'll be interesting to see if they if they do anything like that or if they just kind of keep doing what they're doing. Uh, They've seemed kind of um, not like they want to change the label though. I know that they did center the grading finally. Um, <laughs> that a was a people, much needed change. I know so many people were like big on that. I did not care at all. Like it was. Oh, that, that bothers me so me. much. It was kind of annoying. It was kind of funny though. Like getting an eight centering, nine centering on a card, and it's like I'm gonna send them back a grade on their grade centering. Uh, of <laughs> I like think a they should have lined it up. <laughs> I think if you got like an eight on the centering, the grade should be off. Yeah. <laughs> Not, you need to have good card. centering on the card to get the grade centered, yeah. If you get like a six edges on the, on the card, they just like scuff up the edges of the label. <laughs> yeah. No, they actually, that iteration was really good though. I think they made the label look even cleaner. Um, I was I, pretty I, happy with that change. I'm a person who vastly prefers like the CGC label and case altogether. Mm -hmm. I, I strongly prefer the presentation. I agree. Um, just like strongly prefer it to PSA's label and case. I, th I mean, I like PSA's label and case. I just think the problem for me is like anything past a certain character limit is, it looks oh, bad. Atrocious. Really bad. They're, they're abbreviations. <laughs> the, the character limit for CGC cards is like, it's crazy how far you have to go to make it like even borderline unreadable. Yeah, um, but with some C uh, PSA cards, it's like I don't even know what this is. Oh God, really? I think really like bad. the what was that one promo? It was like one of the Hidden Fates, like Ultra Ball collection promos, premium collection promos. Yeah, and, and the whole string is just like abbreviated with periods, and you just don't. It doesn't even <laughs> say anything. Yeah. I don't think I have anything within arm's reach that's really bad. You the the I forget which one it was, but it was one. It was like a Pikachu card that you gave away for a giveaway. There you go. That's and a great I, example. Like, yeah, yeah it, it's not nearly as bad as it can get. But like Shining Legends Super Premium Collection mm -hmm. SL SPR Prem Cal. <laughs> I mean, I will say when PSA can fit everything, it is very clean. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think I think CGC. I know it's like it's very personal. Um, I think CGC did a great job. 
CGC, yeah. the new labels also have that little holographic, um, kind of like that blue highlight on it that I really like. Yeah, I love I love that. And I, I don't think that was there before, right? Not that I remember. It's like around the edge, I think. Yeah. No, it's very clean. I don't think I have any super recent CGC ones within arm's reach. I, I guess along the same lines, though, as Nick's question to you, I guess I'll ask you. So... CGC, you're kind of in agreement with the general consensus that they seem to have loosened up standards. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the whole zero cert, two cert, four cert PSA thing? Um, has PSA been generally static in their grading standards throughout time, or did they really tighten up and were they grading harder during the four cert era? We're currently, depending on the service level, they're, they're currently issuing cards in either the five or the six cert. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so like, what's your general take on all that? I think the PSA is a lot harder to pin down, um, but I've also condition checked significantly more cards for PSA, um, just because I've been doing condition checks for them for like four or five years. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, you know, the CGC change was very noticeable in the sense that, you know, when I'm looking through cards for returns, if it's a 10, it's gold. So I know immediately if that's there. Um, for PSA, I don't really get the same sort of, I'm not really registering grades as much, uh, mostly because of the way that we have to kind of balance looking through certain numbers quickly enough to get returns back in a reasonable time. Um, but in terms of condition checking, you know, I don't know how many cards I've condition checked, probably six figures worth of now. Um, PSA has been pretty on point for most of their history. Um, I really don't think I've seen any significant period of months where like things were off or too easy or um, just like crazy. I think for the most part, they've stayed relatively consistent. Um, I think that a lot of what you see posted is exceptions in terms of like a grader. Um, I will say, I think volatile volatility has slightly increased during the hiring craze. Um, so I have seen more aberrant grades, um, but that's more in the sense that like, you know, I'll be going through my condition check checks and then it'll grade like two or three grades differently, um, like higher or lower. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on with this one card? Um, but overall, PSA is pretty consistent. And the reason I know that is because I check my condition checks. Um, I don't do it anymore just because, you know, I think that we hit like you hit like 90, 95% accuracy and you just stop caring. Like if you're hitting 95% of the cards, it really doesn't matter. That's kind of the threshold. Um, but when I was checking everything kind of throughout the first three or four years, um, I it was still at that point. So I was condition checking consistently. I didn't change my method really um, on top of just learning and they were rather consistent. So I don't think I'm, I would recognize the same sort of like massive shifts that were happening. Um, and the only place that I would say that might have occurred is in like very early stuff. Um, so, but that's harder to pin down because so much of that is anecdotal and we still don't have a lot of cards back from the past year and a half. So you also have to keep in mind that like the cards we're getting back now are from a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. um so mm -hmm. back when the return time was like three to six months it was kind of easier to pin down like what does this time period look like but the fact that you guys are telling me like you know four versus five versus six that's millions of cards in yeah. differences <laughs> yeah some people have this really like set hierarchy mm -hmm. i don't really subscribe to the whole thing but some people are like four certs were the best always zero certs are the worst and then it's like sixes and then fives and then twos and so like i guess going a little bit deeper into it but as a psa 10 collector okay occasionally a card will go up for auction or it'll have like bad photos so if yes. you're buying as a psa 10 collector and they're all kind of at the same price they're all just available do you feel more comfortable buying a 20 million sir era or a 40 million sir era, 50 million sir era, or, or is it basically like 
a PSA 10 as a PSA 10, generally speaking? I So I think subconsciously, I always feel better with newer certs. Um, mostly because <laughs> I don't think it's anything the PSA has done. I just think the cards depreciate over time. Um, you know, no matter how you store them, no matter what you do, if a card is being moved around, it's creating wear over time. Um, we've all kind of seen the infamous examples of like, uh, I can't remember what it was. I think it was on eBay for like eight months. It was like a PSA 10 base Charizard. A so it was just of its obviously backside. like an eight, yeah. you know, <laughs> like it wasn't even close to a 10. Um, and I think a lot of people were like, oh my God, how could PSA do that? But I was like, this card is probably like, you know, it's been in the slab for like 12 years. Like it's probably just bounced around enough that there's some wear now. Um, and so that's why I say initially, like, you know, obviously like buy the card, not the grade. Um, but no, I think newer certs, I almost always feel more comfortable with, uh, because the less time it's been in that case, the better. And it's another reason I like sending the PWCC vault. Cause I don't want to touch them. Like I want mm -hmm. them to be in a place by themselves, not moving. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on those notification bells. That way you guys don't miss out on any of our future uploads. Another way to support the channel is to use the eBay affiliate link below. At no cost to you, if you buy anything after clicking that link within 24 hours, we will get a portion of the sale, 1% to 4%, depending on the category. We appreciate anyone using that. We will catch you all later.